During photography's transitional period between film and digital, we saw a lot of very unique and interesting camera designs that are now often forgotten to history on both sides of the aisle. The Ricoh MF1 might be one of these cameras, but unlike many of its contemporaries, it might stand the test of time, remaining a functional camera even by modern standards, and sports a unique and versatile 30mm lens. And for some context, at the time of release of the MF1, as well as its predecessor, the 35R, Ricoh was very well known for its GR series of compact film cameras, which also offered wide-angle lenses and high-end functionality. The Ricoh MF1 follows that trend by notably offering auto and manual focus, an aperture priority exposure system with the ability to select your aperture manually, a separate hot shoe to complement the included flash, plus minus two exposure compensation, a self-timer, and a menu system which, of all things, allows you to select continuous shooting. So, with it being a beautiful day today in Nakamegiro, Tokyo, I'm gonna go take a few pictures with the MF1, and we're gonna see if it's a relic of the past or a hidden gem. I'm David, and this is The Whole Picture. After photographing with the MF1 for a little bit, what initially struck me was how well the ergonomics were designed, especially for like a lower end camera. Upon release in 2001, this is around 35,000 Japanese yen, so maybe 350 US dollars, give or take. And for that kind of camera, probably positioned below the GR series in Ricoh's lineup, it's so well designed for actual photographers. The grip here, your hand fits perfectly. The dial also is right where your thumb is and the menu system is just such a modern thing, let alone your ability to select the aperture as well as focus, the hot shoe and the flash, which unfortunately both of these don't work on my camera, but all of it just leads to this really robust experience for actual photographers. Manual focus is also really nice here with a tab. I don't think there's any other compact camera like this that features almost a Leica-esque focus tab and you get uh, different clicks so you know what position you're in from off to autofocus, infinity, and then close focus of 0.6 meters. And it's been interesting using a 30 millimeter lens. It's not that common of a focal length. I think a few SLR systems have one, but as far as compacts go, Ricoh does have the R1S, which features a 30 millimeter lens at 3.5, but it's really not that common of a focal length. And as a fan of the 35 millimeter lens and an occasional user of a 28 millimeter lens, I find it splits the difference pretty nicely, but we'll see what the photos look like when I get them developed, and I'll get back to you with those at my office. So now I'm back at the office and I've had a chance to take a look at the photos. I always get my film developed at Osawa Camera in Ebisu. It's a family-run business that's been there for several generations now, and so the owners and staff are very knowledgeable about cameras, but when I showed up with the MF1, nobody knew about it or at least remembered it. So I think it shows that it's quite the rare camera. I think I've only seen one other example in camera stores, but of course online, it's not that difficult to find one, and they usually go for about 150 to 250 US dollars. And in the meantime, between sending the roll off for development and getting the photos back, I did have some time to do some research as well as dig through the menus, and the MF1 is quite the impressive camera, more so than I initially expected. So first off, the LCD menu can display your potential shutter speed, which is nice, but somewhat unfortunately, only when using apertures of f5.6 or smaller. It would have been amazing to have this in the viewfinder instead, and I did get some motion blur in photos I thought would be fine before knowing about this feature, but that's something that does tend to happen when you're testing out a new compact camera, and as you learn their limitations, it does become easier to avoid this happening, but your average compact doesn't have any shutter information, so even having this kind of feedback on the LCD screen is a huge plus. Something I forgot to mention was that beyond the burst continuous mode, the MF1 actually has a multi-exposure function. This is pretty rare for compact cameras, but it can be super fun and useful. In the case of the MF1, it also enables a hidden feature that is pretty useful for street photographers. It seems like you could take a photo in the multi-exposure mode and then turn the camera off or switch modes, in which case the film would advance, canceling out the multi-exposure functionality and just giving you a single frame effectively letting you delay the film advance, which is fantastic because it's quite loud, but the shutter is very soft and quiet. 
It is something that I do want to test out further, but paired with the 30mm lens, manual aperture, manual focus, shutter readout, hot shoe, exposure compensation, and even the burst mode, I think this has a lot of potential to be one of the best budget compact film street photography cameras in its class, next to say the Olympus XA. Of course not just for street, this camera does seem like a great choice for many situations. But at least with the role of Kodak Pro Image 100 I used, it was quite punchy and contrasty with a lot of character, which does appeal to me for street photography. It also handles complex exposures like this quite well, with details retained in the shadows and highlights. One complaint I do have, specifically when it comes to street photography, is that the camera will go to sleep after about a minute of not using it, and to wake it up you do have to press or half press the shutter once before being able to take a photo, which did affect my timing on something like this, and I could see it being a slight issue when the photo in front of you is very time sensitive. But my few complaints about this camera can probably be resolved for the most part by actually getting more experience using it. At first I thought this was going to be a one roll review and then maybe I'd loan it out to friends that want to try film, but it actually proved to be a much more capable camera than I first expected and I'm going to see if I can incorporate it into my workflow. So I'd say it's quite the hidden gem and the Ricoh MF1 offers almost if not all the features a modern photographer looks for when it comes to compact 35mm film cameras, and even a little bit extra. It isn't perfect, but for the price, it's definitely worth compromising for. What do you think about the MF1? Or have you used one in the past and maybe have some valuable information you could share with me, as a quick Google search doesn't really bring up too much, and I'd love to do a more in-depth or proper review on this camera. Anyways, I'm David, and this is the whole picture. Uh, filming a YouTube video. Do you know this camera? MF1? It's very similar to the GR.